If you love superhero movies, but you think the big problem is there aren't enough chicks, this movie is still terrible. You're forgetting something. I'm revengeful. We have to stop her. This is the start of a new beginning. Yeah! I'm gonna give you my formal review in just a moment. I'm gonna give you a very comprehensive review. It's gonna have quadrants and ratings and numbers and things. But first though, I wanna tell you what happens in the movie. I want to do that, but I can't because I don't know. Because I watched the movie and I watched every minute of that stupid movie and I still have no idea what happened. Here's what I know happened. There's a white lady and then there's a black lady and then there is a younger, more ethnically ambiguous, vaguely brown kind of girl. And so you've checked all of the racial diversity there and you got a lot of chicks. But I don't really understand how they relate to one another. The white lady is Captain Marvel. She's the only one whose name I really remember. Then the black lady related to Captain Marvel when she was little or something, but then Captain Marvel went away and she was angry about that. And then the girl, the newcomer girl, it, her, her, her character name I do remember, it's Kamala. I remember it because of the vice president. It's Kamala Khan, and she's a big fan of Captain Marvel. And this was when I knew this movie was gonna be terrible because the movie has no relationship to reality whatsoever because the very first premise that I've got to swallow in the movie is that little girls are just idolizing Captain Marvel, that they're lying on their bed saying, when I grow up, I want to be Captain Marvel, which is what the feminists want little girls to do. They want them to lie on their bed. They want to pretend that little girls want to be big superhero wrestler, sumo boxers someday or something, but they don't. Little girls want to be princesses and they want to be swept off their feet by Prince Charming and they want to do what women have done for all of history and they're going to have the same desires that women have had for all of history. And so the feminist claptrap that's come about since the 1960s is just fake and it's fake because it doesn't explain how women really behave but it also doesn't even speak to the desires that women have. So from the beginning I said, oh no, here we go. Here we go. Then Samuel L. Jackson comes in and he's running around his sort of chaotic ship doing something. I don't know, he's a guy. He's a guy and he's telling them about a mission or something. And the, there's a bad girl, she's a girl, Dar Dar Binks, or I don't know, whatever the Dar character is. She's gonna destroy the world. And so Captain Marvel and the other lady and the kid have to stop her. But the reason they all have to do it together is because they've become entangled. They discovered an ancient artifact and because of this, they switch places all the time. And why and how do they switch places? I don't really know. The filmmakers try to explain this probably two or three or four times, and it never makes any more sense than it did the previous time. And it's really just a cheap little filmmaking trick, which is whenever the writers have gotten themselves into a spot where they can't write themselves out of it, they can just switch the characters out and completely avoid any of the problems of actual storytelling. So you've got these characters who are all extraordinarily one-dimensional, with no stakes whatsoever. There is this minor conflict between Captain Marvel and the other lady, but they just resolve that by, uh, spoiler alert, Captain Marvel says, hey, I'm sorry I left, and then the other lady says, oh, it's okay, let's work together now. So that resolves those stakes for whatever they were worth. And then the little girl, her stakes are that she really likes Captain Marvel, and she's really in awe of Captain Marvel, she's starstruck. And then Captain Marvel's like, hey, stop being so starstruck. And she's like, okay, that's fine. And then they all work together. So that was it, they resolved that issue. And then I don't know what the evil person's doing, some lady who has a few villainous moments, but otherwise you're never afraid of anything. And then there's the big exciting scene and, and nothing really happens whatsoever. The two most notable aspects of the movie, there's a cat who keeps showing up, which I actually like. To me, this is the most truthful aspect of the movie because it proves that Captain Marvel is just a witch. She's got this little cat, like her familiar spirit that's around with her, like all witches throughout all of history. Because women who cast weird magic spells and would travel through the air, you know, on, like on broomsticks, uh, they were called witches in the past. And so this is a nice nod to that and I got a kick out of it. The other notable aspect of the movie is there's a song and dance number. They arrive at some planet and in this planet, the way the people communicate is they do song and dance. So they do that for a little bit for no reason and then they, they work it out and they fight and they beat the bad guy. The most obvious thing wrong with the movie is the feminism. At the physical level, the notion that these women can fight men physically, they can't. We know that because men are physically stronger than women. So then they say, well, no, they can because they're super women. 
But okay, what's the superpower? The, the whole point of superhero movies is they're supposed to tell you something about human nature. The, the superhero power in the feminist world is just becoming a man, which probably explains why we've gone in short order from feminist ideology to a complete erasure of the distinctions between the sexes to a complete abolition of marriage to now transgender ideology. Because the feminists really believe, it's a very anti-woman view, that the way that you can make a woman, an ordinary woman, super, is just to turn her into a man. But that is not the case, and it's actually a deeply misogynistic view to hold, and it's not compelling at all for the audience. Underneath that, women and men don't want to see women fight the bad guys and men swept off their feet by Princess Charming. That's just an inversion of desire. There's really no role for men in this movie, and the women are from whatever planet Captain Marvel is from. You know it's bad because I took a quick little perusal. I said, am I being, am I being harsh, overly harsh on this? And no, even the liberal critics admit this thing is just horrific. The one silver lining is that the young girl is, is pretty good. She gives the best performance it is possible to give with this horrific script in this dumb universe that they've created. But otherwise, it's, it's totally unbearable. Even the liberal critics admit it. The problem with superhero movies, even if you like them, is when they start to break their own rules. It's when they start to just make up rules on the fly. When the rules can't be explained. When the screenwriters have to try to explain three and four times why it is that all the characters are switching places and no one quite ever gets to it. And it's just shoddily written and there are lame excuses for flashbacks to the first movie and who knows, maybe Marvel is building towards some bigger movie here and this is just a stepping stone. But if it is, I shudder to think what that will be. Right now, go to GenuCell.com slash Knowles, letter Y, letter T. Our friends at GenuCell have launched a new product called GenuCell 3, which works fast on your under eye bags and puffiness. GenuCell 3 is smoother, more luxurious, and it uses advanced technology to deliver complex vitamins and minerals directly to your face for instant hydration. It is like Gatorade for your skin. This new GenuCell technology keeps your skin looking young and healthy for years to come. The GenuCell Fall Classics package also includes a jawline treatment for a more firm neck and jawline. It also includes GenuCell's Anti-Wrinkle Moisturizer and Deep Firming Serum. Get your skin ready for the cold and dry weather. If you don't look and feel your absolute best, you will get your money back, no questions asked. Go to GenuCell.com slash KnowlesYT, or you can call 800-SKIN, S-K-I-N, 211, for extra discounts on this amazing fall package. Results in 12 hours or less. The immediate effects are included for free. By the way, the founder of this company, great Coptic Christian from Egypt, who left there for the American dream. So head on over to GenuCell.com slash Knowles, letter Y, letter T, or call 800-SKIN, S-K-I-N, 211. For those who are unfamiliar with it, my, my grading scale, I still don't quite understand it myself, but Mr. Davies and I thought it up. You've got one axis, it's lame to epic, and then you got, that's the Y axis, I guess, right? Then you got the X axis, and that is lib to trad. And then you impose on the axis quadrants. And let's say you're here, right? And you go epic trad. That's like Braveheart. That's like the Passion of the Christ. That is disproportionately Mel Gibson movies. If you are thinking of a really epic movie that gets plaudits, but it's super lib, you'd think of a movie like American Beauty. Now, if you think of a movie that's, that's extremely lame and super lib, you think of a movie like uh, the, the all-chick Ghostbusters, or now, I think we're gonna actually have to replace that one with a new example. And then if you think of a movie that is traditional and conservative, but not, perhaps not as gloriously made, Mr. Davies said it, not me, he said, well, an example of one of these movies would be maybe some of the movies that I, Ben Davies, have been in. Not all, he's been in, he's been in great movies, but it, maybe some would fit into that quadrant. And where does the Marvels go? It's a zero. It's so lame, it's so powerfully lame. It, it is as though the Cartman version of Kathleen Kennedy wrote this script herself and then directed it and then edited it. Put a chick in it, make her gay! It's just that lame, it's, it's a complete perfect zero. Now, this is where it gets a little unexpected maybe. On the scale of super lib to super trad, it's not a zero. It's not, it's, it would almost be better if it were super lib. It would almost be better if this were written by Angela Davis and it were a bunch of radical, communist, Amazonian, half-lesbian terrorist woman. At least then it, 
and there would be something interesting about it. It's not. It's perfectly pasteurized, corporate woke, completely inoffensive, other than to good taste, but it's, it's inoffensive to any mainstream center-left political gobbledygook slop. So there's nothing, the, the nearest thing they have to something being woke is the diversity casting. They have, you know, every different shade and every different color and the white guys are the bad guys. And But even that is so lame at this point. There's nothing edgy about that. It's so on the woke scale, on the lib to trad scale, I'd give it a three, maybe a four. Let's give it a three and a half on that scale. So the movie then on a scale of what, what is it, zero to 20, I guess I'd give it a three and a half, totally bottom of the barrel on epicness, but just like a little, only a little bit on the lib side. To quote my distant cousin, Hillary Clinton, it's just a, a movie to be thrown in with the basket of other deplorables and never heard from again. See you next time. That was a really important journalism we just did.